Welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Today we're gonna we're gonna do um, some Bobcat excavator. We're gonna do the 10 hour service and I'm gonna go through it with you and show you how I do it. And basically every 10 hours you should check your oil, check your engine oil, engine air filter, air system, engine cooling system, hydraulic fluid, fuel filter. Um, the fuel filter you need to drain the water and sediment from the filter. And this you're supposed to do every 10 hours. So I'm going to go through it. And um, some of these things we don't need to do because, like, I don't have a cab. So I don't have air conditioning or heating. Um, indicator lights. Pivot points. That's probably the biggest thing, greasing all your, greasing all the machinery. Yeah, so let's get started. We'll do our 10-hour maintenance. Um, this is something you do every 10 hours. I usually do it every eight hours actually, but that's just because an eight hour day, I think. Um, anyway, let's get started. I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so first on the list is check the oil. So I get some rubber gloves and proceed to check the oil. Bobcat has really nice access. You can see how big the compartment is right there. That little yellow stick right there is engine oil. Let's check that first. Now this oil was just changed not too long ago, so you can see it looks really good. And it was right on the money. Do another little quick check here. You can see it's really clean. And it was right where it needed to be. Next up, we're gonna check the air filter. And right here, this big black canister is the air filter. Now this had a little dirt inside the canister, so I ended up cleaning this out a little bit. It didn't have dirt all the way in there, but the filter actually looked pretty good. But it did have dirt a little bit inside the canister, so I cleaned that out before I put it back on. It's always good to write the hours and the date on your air filter. Actually, anything you change, I suggest writing the date on it and how many hours are on the machine. Kind of a good way to keep track. So right here I put the air filter back on. Three little clips. Next up is the um, fluid level for your coolant system. And you can check that right here on this little canister on the right. Let's see if I give you a better picture here. Right there's your canister, and you can see when it's cold, it's, it's right on the mark where it's supposed to be. So that looks good. Next on the list is the hydraulic fluid. And you basically have to open up this other compartment on the side. So right here I get that open, and you can see this big black container right there. That's your hydraulic fluid. And right there you have a sight glass right there. And that thing's looking good. It's got plenty in it. It's right where it needs to be. So, so the hydraulic fluid check looks good. Next up your, is your fuel filter. And what I need to do is drain the, any water and sediment out of it. But I'm going to get a little glass jar just in case. So right here I get a little cup. And there was no water or anything in it. So everything was good. So that's actually a good sign. You don't want water in your fuel. Next on the list is going to be track tension. So let's close these lids up and take a look at the tracks. So right here you can see I've lifted the track up off the ground and my, ten my tension's good. I have between a half and five eighths gap between the track and the roller and that's right where it wants to be. However, right here, I'm going to show you if you do, if your track is out of adjustment, the place that you adjust it is right under this, uh, right under this plate right here. So right there, you take off the plate and you can see right insert, there's a grease insert in there. Now, if you need to let, if you have too much tension, you can let grease out and that'll release some of the tension. But if you need tension, then you pump some grease in. And that's that's how you do your adjustment for your track. And that's something, believe it or not, you need to check every day is 
the gap between the bottom of your track right here. Right here, since I have it open, I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Get some of this excess grease out of there. And right there, you can see that's the grease cert that you can either put tension in or let tension out of your tracks. And basically, it pumps up a big cylinder that um, creates the tension. So let's close that up. Next up is to basically get this machine stretched out so we could grease all of the cert fittings. Basically, grease all your pivot points. Anything that pivots is going to have a grease cert. And at the same time, I check for any, any broken parts up in the front by the bucket and on the boom. You know, look for any cracks and just give it a good inspection. I used to use a, just a regular hand pump for the grease, but now I, I kind of upgraded my system to a Milwaukee 18-volt grease gun. And I did a review on it recently. But um, that sure makes life a lot easier if you have to grease a lot of certs. And this, this Bobcat, I don't know how many it has, but it's, it's probably over 25 or 30 grease certs. Right here, I get out the Milwaukee grease gun and start greasing all of those parts. I start up in the front because there's a lot of grease certs on this bucket. Um, I forget how many I counted, two, three, four. There's quite a few though. So I just start there and start greasing one at a time. I pump in three pumps in each one. And um, that's pretty much my go-to is three pumps. And there's a lot. If you just keep looking around, you'll find another one. So sometimes you miss them, but you, you try your best to get every one of them. And if you look at every pivot point, you'll usually find one. And over time, you kind of get used to where they're at. You can see there's, there's three of them up there. But everywhere there's a pin, there's usually some grease certs. And you got that one right there, that one right there. It's pretty easy. Every, everywhere there's a pin or a pivot point, there's going to be a grease cert. So you just kind of look around. I'm kind of getting used to where they're at, so each time that I have to do it, it's, uh, it gets easier. Last up is the front blade. There's a few pins back here. Um, actually, that front, well, there's right there, there's probably six of them up in there. And then the front blade, um, it has quite a few too. I think it has about six of them just for that blade, six or seven. Um, one on the front, one on the back, one on, it's got two rams because it's an angle blade. If you ever get a, if, if you're in the market for an excavator and you ever get one, make sure to order it with the angle blade because that's the only way to go. It's really nice for backfilling. And next up, we pump some in the, in there, right there. And, and then what we need to do is rotate this one um, 90 degree, 180 degrees and then pump, and pump it in again. I'm gonna eventually get a little lock for that so that I can actually be up there and rotate it 25, 25, 20, you know, rotate it 45 degrees, pump it in. But in this case, I don't have that lock. So I just, I rotate it 180 degrees and then give it another th three pumps in there. Right here, you can see I'm gonna rotate this thing around. It's important that you rotate and get the grease on that pivot joint in, in two different, get both sides of it. So right here I rotate it all the way around and then I get my grease gun and I pump this last bit in. Anyway, that's up. That's it for my eight hour, well they say 10 hours, but I usually do it every eight hours. Um, this is the 10 hour maintenance on the Bobcat excavator. It's quite a little, quite a bit of stuff to do, but the machine works hard, and if you take care of it, it'll last a long time. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, 
and I will see you next time. Later.